and I just hug my knees. And I'm just sitting there trying to fill the water, trying to make the pain go away. But there's nothing you can do. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel, Hustling 101, where I share my life with the world, the good, the bad, and everything in between. I did a live New Year's, New Year's night, and I got an idea. Actually, shout out to Out of Fear Gang for giving me this idea, this video idea. And it's about precipitated withdrawal. Yes, I've been through it. I've been through it actually twice before, and it sucks. And I wanted to talk about it. Okay, so basically I was in the I was in full blown fentanyl addiction. I would start withdrawing within four hours. That's how bad it was. You know, I was taking between ten to thirty of the blue thirty counterfeit pills a day, as some of you already know. And I had just started this new job. I, you know, I'm trying to I've got it in my head, I'm gonna get clean. I'm not going to a suboxing clinic, but I ended up linking up with somebody I know on the street and I bought like six strips and I was going to use these six strips to wing myself off the fentanyl and then stop taking the strips and just, you know, be good. Right. I'm sure a lot of people have tried this. Obviously it didn't work for me, but it, it threw me into precipitated withdrawal. So like I said, I'm starting, I'm starting this new job actually at a place called a Coca-Cola warehouse. I was driving a forklift, pretty easy job, nothing, nothing hard. I know how to drive a forklift pretty good. So I just started this job making $17 an hour. It wasn't what I was making previously, but it was a start. You know, I had it in my head what I was going to do. I'm going to get clean. I'm going to work all the overtime I can with this job. I'm going to try to get my life back together. Yeah, everything's great. So I start this job. This is my first night. I'm on night shift. I've got a I've got a suboxone strip out of the six that I bought. I took one with me because I knew I was gonna start withdrawing like mid shift. I was working I think ten hour shifts. I knew I was gonna start withdrawing sometime in the middle of my shift. So I had it in my head. I was gonna rip the strip in half and take half the strip and you know uh transition to suboxone i did it wrong guys so i want this to kind of be educational too don't don't if you're if you're heavy on fentanyl you need to wait like 24 hours a lot of times and sometimes even that's not long enough the the crazy thing about suboxone the introductions to suboxone from fentanyl specifically fentanyl because the thing about fentanyl is it it likes to stick to your opiate receptor. So it stays there a lot longer than something like heroin because it's synthetic. I didn't really know all this. It likes to stick to your opiate receptor. So you got to take a lot more time. Like you got to be in full blown withdrawal before you introduce suboxone. Because what will happen is if the, if the fentanyl is still on your receptors, the suboxone will come in and kick the fentanyl off your receptors because the, the, your receptors lock suboxone more than fentanyl. So it kicks the fentanyl off your receptors and introduces the suboxone and will throw you into precipitated withdrawal, full blown, even worse than it would have been anyways. And the, 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 the shitty thing about precipitated withdrawal is you can't, you can't use again to make it go away. Uh, suboxone, the half-life is like 24 to 48 hours. So you just got to go through the withdrawal once you've entered precipitated withdrawal. But back to the story. I'm at work. I wait like eight hours after I take my last fentanyl dose. And I'm starting to feel like shit, you know. Like I said, I would start withdrawing within four hours. Eight hours in, I'm, you know, nose running, eyes watering, sneezing. I'm, I'm in withdrawal. So I'm like, okay, it's I, I'm probably good to go ahead and take a half. I take a half, I continue my job, and about 45 minutes to an hour, it starts hitting me. But I don't start feeling better. I start feeling worse. I start sweating even more. I start getting really weak. 
and I just don't feel good. So in my mind, don't ask me why I did this, guys, but I'm like, okay, maybe I just need more. Don't do this shit. If you take a little bit of Suboxone and it makes you feel worse, you don't need more. You need to wait longer. You need to stick out the withdrawal and just deal with it and wait longer. Don't think you're just going to take more and everything's going to get better. The opposite will happen. It's going to get worse. So my dumb ass takes the other half. You know, I put it under my tongue. That's how they tell you to do it. I try to do it all, everything right. So I absorb it, all, every bit of it. I take it. I, I take the other half. Continue my job. You know, I'm feeling like shit. I'm trying to get through my job. I'm, I'm only about halfway through my shift, a little more than halfway through my shift. And this is my first night. Remember this. Another 45 minutes goes by and I'm like, damn, man, I start feeling even worse. I'm panicking. I'm feeling so bad. I'm just like, fuck, dude. Just from driving the forklift, the wind hit me. You know how your body temperature is like hot but cold at the same time? I'm sweating. I'm sweating profusely. And the wind hitting me is just like chilling me, but I'm sweating. I'm hot as fuck, but I'm cold as fuck at the same time. And I'm just like, Jesus. So finally, I, I pull my forklift up to the office. I can't take it anymore, guys. I pull my forklift up to the office. I jump out. I tell the guy, yo, hey, man, I got an emergency. I got to leave right now. I come up with some bullshit. I wasn't going to tell him I'm fucking withdrawing from drugs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, they would have fired me right then. But I come up with an excuse, tell them I got a family emergency, like I need to leave right now. It's my first day, so I know I can afford the point or whatever, you know. Um, so I leave. I'm driving my girlfriend's car at this point. I jump in the car. This is crazy, guys. I'm so, I, I'm in such bad precipitated withdrawal I'm trying my best, and I only live like 15 minutes from my house, from this job, from where I was living. I'm trying my best to get home. I can barely drive. Like I'm. This was the crazy part about this, though. The inside of the car started fogging up from the heat my body was putting off. I had to roll the windows down, which sucked because the wind hitting me made me feel really cold. But I'm hot. You know, you know how it is when you're in withdrawal, guys. I'm really cold, but I'm hot, but the windows are fogging up because the heat my body's putting off. Shit's crazy. So I finally make it home. I jump out the car. I leave everything in the car. I'm not worried about nothing. I run in the house. My girlfriend's asleep. Like I said, it's, I'm, I'm working third shift. So when I went home, it's like two in the morning. You know, it was, it was, I think my shift ended at like six. It's like one or two in the morning. I immediately run inside and did the only thing I know to do. I know I can't use it again to make this go away. Like, I just got to stick this out. I, I run inside. I turn the shower on. Put it on hot water. Actually, I, I run a bath. It's not the shower. I run a bath. I, and then I just strip my clothes down. Like, I'm soaking wet from sweating. But I'm cold too, right? I strip all my clothes off and get in the bathtub. And I just hug my knees. And I'm just sitting there trying to fill the water. Trying to make the pain go away but there's nothing you can do i'm just curled up like a ball just rocking back and forth trying to feel the heat of the water because that's it gives you some type of uh relaxation the water does for some reason it just does so finally i do that i probably sit in the the, the bath for 20 minutes finally i get up i get out I'm butt naked. I don't care. I don't worry about putting no clothes on. I grab a towel and try to dry off. I go to the bed, scoop my girlfriend over, and I just wrap up in a blanket. And I shit you not, guys, I laid there for eight hours, didn't get no sleep, tossing and turning back and forth. I know I was getting on her nerves. I, you know, I'm tossing and turning back and forth just in, in, in agony, you know what I'm saying? Just in pure agony. So the next day, about 12 hours goes by, and I'm like, yo, man, I, I got to try something, man, because I'm still in precipitated withdrawal. I finally get out of bed. I get in my phone. I hit up a dealer. I go and get about five fentanyl pills. Cost me about 50 bucks. And 
I start doing them. And for me, this is just for me. You need, this is for educational entertainment purposes only. Don't, I almost hate saying this because I, I think somebody's going to try it. I did a lot more fentanyl than I normally would, and it did help the withdrawal. Not a lot, but it made it to where I was kind of okay. I think I did so much fentanyl, it kind of overpowered the Suboxone a little bit. But it wasn't like normal. Like The amount of fentanyl I did would have had me slumped. But I did a lot more, and it, it helped, you know? So I fell back into my fentanyl addiction. From that point on, I was kind of scared of Suboxone. I was like, damn, dude, I don't want to go through that again. So it scared me. But I still had these strips laying around. Okay, the second time I went through precipitated withdrawal, it was basically the same thing. At this point, I had done been fired from the Coca-Cola job from nodding out on fentanyl. I might make a whole video about that, about the jobs I ran through during my drug addiction. But uh, I was sitting home and this was, this was right before I moved to Nashville. This is right before I did all that. So this is precipitated withdrawal number two. I tried it again. Like an idiot, this time I waited about 12 hours, thinking that that was gonna make a difference. I probably realistically needed to wait about 24 to 36 hours, honestly. Because my, my receptors were just so um, engulfed in the fentanyl. Like, you know, when you're on it as hard as I was, you need more time for that shit to kind of get off your receptors and so you can introduce the Suboxone. I had a few strips left. I did the same thing, guys, but I waited 12 hours. I, I took half of the thing, waited an hour, thinking, oh, God, I, you know, I'm probably going to be feeling better in about an hour. Nope, feeling worse. Same fucking thing. Same thing happened. Uh, so I had to stick that out. This time I waited uh, and did the same thing. I took the other half when I started feeling worse. Don't ask me why I did this, guys, but I... I, I I guess out of desperation, you're just willing to try anything to make that feeling go away. But yeah, I, I took the other half, was feeling like shit. Like six hours later, I call up another dealer. He comes over to my house, smokes with me. It didn't really do shit, but it, it, it did make me feel a little better. Might have been psychological, guys. But it did make me feel a little, little better. And after that, I went straight back to my fentanyl addiction. So both, uh, and I had tried Suboxone way before this too, and it actually worked, but this time it didn't. The, these last two times I went through it, it didn't work. So uh, I never did Suboxone again after that. And I don't think I ever will. I, when I moved to Nashville, I went to the Kratom. As y'all already know, I, I, I did my struggles with Kratom. But yeah, man, that, that's my precipitated withdrawal stories. Two of them. Two of them. If you're getting on Suboxone, listen to the doctor. That, that's all I can tell you. And you need to wait a while, especially if you're coming off fentanyl specifically. You need to wait a while. You need to be in full-blown withdrawal. But you already know what it is. I'm just a guy that decided to get on YouTube and share his life with the world. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, peace out.